my trippin'. Shorty thought I was different. Had me catch her feelings, but really I wasn't fishing. She a baddie though. Range Rovers over caddies, bro. Flip the whip in Malibu, but park it in the valley, yo. Let's go. Working back, flagging with some red on the toe. She designed to everything. I think she did the Melrose. Keep it booking, ain't no rookie. She be throwing elbows. I know she is a, yeah, I know she is a real one. Check, check, one, two. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Songwriters Workshop featuring the Verse Lab MV1. My name is Matt Shaquan, a.k.a. Recluse. I'm going to be one of your captains today for the next hour. Today, what are we going to get into? We're going to look at the Verse Lab MV1 from top to bottom. We're going to make some beats and some songs uh, and cover the workflow and show you how this is a really unique piece uh, for making full songs from beginning to end. We're also going to catch up with our man, Cool Out in Philadelphia, uh, who actually just finished making a full album on the Verse Lab in the last week. So really proving that you can finish more music on the Verse Lab quickly. Uh, we're also going to have a sneak peek at Zen Beats 2.1. If you're not familiar with Zen Beats, it is our beat making app uh, cross platform. And there is uh, a version coming very soon that will integrate with Verse Lab MV1, so we're going to check that out. Then we're going to roll over to LA to catch up with Zilly of Black Lack. We're going to talk to him about songwriting, uh, his career, uh, collaboration tips, how he's using the Verse Lab, and we're also going to do a little uh, a little collaboration ourselves using a remix, uh, a track he's made, and, and a little remix that I made off the back of it. And then at the end, um, we're going to do some Q&A as well. If you guys have some questions for us, let us know. In the meantime, if you do have questions, post them up in the chat. We do have our main man, uh, Dustin Good, moderating that. So um, feel free to, to hit us up along the way as well. All right, let's get into it. The Verse Lab MV1. So this is an uh, all-in-one song production studio. Um, there has been some confusion around it. What does it do? What is it meant to, what is it meant to do ultimately? And it is for making songs. Um, you can, of course, make beats. You can make grooves of this like other products. But what is really unique about this is that you can take those beats and grooves and refine them and create a full song just by following this workflow strip here. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, so as you guys can see from left to right, uh, this workflow strip starts with a sequence. So this is where we make our clips and our basic ideas. We then can fashion those into sections, song sections being like intro, outro, verse, chorus, bridge, pre-chorus, turnaround, etc. Then once we have those sections uh, laid out, we can then arrange them into a song. Once that song is arranged, uh, we can then record vocals on top or other instruments using the vocal track. Uh, once we have the song arranged, the vocals tracked, we can then mix all our tracks using this mixer function. And then finally, uh, we can use some onboard mastering and mix it down to WAFA, uh, which then lives on the SD card. So it's a really cool uh, instrument here for producers that sing, uh, producers that collaborate with singers, singers that want to have a, a sketch pad to lay out ideas on, um, and also for the, for the professional that just wants some, a mobile sketch pad for being able to quickly create song ideas that they can refine later, uh, maybe in a DAW and Zen Beats or whatnot. So let's walk through... Um, we talked about the workflow, but let's actually walk through some of the other features, and we'll make a song from beginning to end. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up one of these, we call them genre templates. So these are um, templates that we've put together to help you get started. They're curated sounds. Um, there are uh, different effects, vocal effects in there as well. Um, and there's a single clip as well. So there's like kind of a, a basic beat that you can use. This is good for vocalists if you wanted to use it for um, something to track to, right? Um, but in this case, we're just going to use that as a starting point to quickly make a song, okay? So we're going to start in sequence mode. And we have our drum tracks here and our melodic tracks. Let me just explain that real quick. So we have our kick. And we have 16 transpose steps on this 4x4 four four pad. Um, same thing with a snare. In this case, it's a rim shot, hi-hat, and a drum kit with different sounds. 
Now, even though these are silk screen or printed on there as such, that doesn't mean that you have to stick to that format. You can delete, say, the kick track or the snare track. You can replace it with another sound, another tone track. Um, if you wanted to add an extra synth line, melody, bass line or something, you could totally do that, customize it. But for the people that just want to get into like a pretty straightforward workflow to making a song, this is kind of all laid out there for you to get into it. So let me start by um, making the kick kick track, okay? So I'm going to go to section select, and there's already some stuff programmed on here. We're going to ignore that, and I'm going to start with uh, number nine here. <clears throat> okay, so we have our kick track. We're on section nine. I'm going to note. So note mode is where we can play in real time. But I'm actually going to use this step sequencer. One of the great thing about, things about Verse Lab is you have the ability to play in real time or you can use the step sequencer. That also means that you can play off-grid if you want to, you know, conjure Dilla, lo-fi styles, um, or you can play very much on the grid, more kind of modern trap style, or, you know, be it dance music, EDM, house, techno. You could do grid with, with or without grid, basically. So in this case, we're going to do some kind of Afrobeat style. We're going to stick to the grid. So I've picked my sound, and then I see my step sequencer. If you're not familiar with the step sequencer, basically, when I press these steps here, when the cursor gets the step, it's going to play. So we have 16 steps in a measure. 1, 5, 9, and 13 are the beat that we're hearing, right? Let me turn it up just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go to um, the snare. In this case, it's a, a rim shot. We'll do like kind of a clave rhythm. So I'm going to pick this sound here. It's a little bit lower pitch. Real straightforward. Then come over to my hi-hat, laying the 16th pattern. Now, if I want to edit these notes, I can. So say I wanted to do like a double time hit on 14. I would take this edit button, press 14, and then I get to this note edit menu here on the screen. So I can change my note value, the length, the velocity. The starter stop point, this is good if you want to kind of do some push-pull stuff with certain notes. You want to give it, again, that kind of offbeat feel. But in this case, I'm looking at the sub-step here. So I can turn that to, say, one, one half. And now you can see, maybe it's a little hard to tell, but that note is blinking. And there's a different color to it. And you can hear it playing different values. So we've got a whole bunch of different values that we have here. Flam, one quarter. So this basically means four, four notes on one step. We're just going to keep it on one here. Okay. Next, let's go to um, the kit. So as I said before, we have different sounds. So up to now, I've done everything on the... Uh, let me just switch that off. Up till now, I've done everything on the step sequencer. Now I'm going to play something in live. Now before I do that, we have quantization settings here. So I'm going to go shift section select so we can get to quantize. So you can see you have input quantization. Um, you can turn your quantize master on and it's actually set by percentage. Um, you can also turn the quantize off and then quantize after. You can also quantize the clip. But for now, like I said, we're going to do everything uh, with the uh, quantize on. So, let's lay in some, some congas and whatnot. Um, another thing you want to do is you can set your tempo here by holding shift and sequence. You can go to turn your tempo, BP there, count in, metronome on or off. You also have different metronome types. That's where you get to that. Um, so, we're going to press record. We're going to have a little count in. And I'm just going to randomly hit a couple conga parts. Before I do that, I want to... Um, Everything I've played up to now has been one bar. So if I want to make any section a little bit longer, um, I can hold copy and the measure button here. And you can see, hopefully, it said duplicate measure. So now I have, instead of a one bar pattern, I have two bars. So I'm going to hit record. And luckily, it's quantizing it for me because I'm slop style. There we go. All right, so we've done our drum tracks. Good to go. Now, if we come down to our melodic tracks, um, we have bass, instrument one and two, and the vocal, which we'll go get to a little bit later. Um, 
Now, we, we're hearing the bass sound now. You can see that it's actually uh, in a scale. So you can set the scale and the key for any song um, by holding Edit and pressing Song. This is where you can get to some of your song settings. But here's we, we can see we have the key of D, major scale. So anything I play on here is going to be kind of in the pocket, which is good. This is what we want. Okay. All right, so let's record something in. Um, same thing, I'm going to make this one a little bit longer. There we go. Here we go. All right, so we quickly just made a bass line. That's cool. All right, let's check out instrument one. So same thing. Uh, I'm going to make this four bars. So I'm going to duplicate it twice. So one bar duplicated twice is four bars. Record is on. Let's go. So that was pretty easy. Um, instrument two, let's have a listen to it. It's kind of a bell sound. So we can use this just for a little bit extra frosting. Now, just to tell you guys a couple uh, cool things that I haven't used for this track, but we'll probably get into a little bit later. We have a style mode. Uh, style mode is great on, for instance, hi-hats. What it does is it plays rhythmic intervals. So like these are just straight rhythms. And then on the top, it actually plays patterns, so a combination of these rhythms. So this is great if you you not really don't have any ideas of your own. You would just want to throw something in really quick. This is a great way to kind of channel some uh, some of these tools into your track. Now, in the case of uh, the melodic tracks, when you're in style mode, you have an arpeggiator. There's a bunch of different ways you can tweak this. It, we, we could go deep into it, but basically you can change the rhythm, the direction, the style. You can hit edit here and you can see different style variations, motifs. You can have the hold on or off. And then if you hold edit, uh, she holds style and turn this value knob, you can get to some additional arpeggio uh, settings. But we're not going to worry about that right now. I did want to mention it, though, because it could be quite useful in the creative process. For now, though, we're just going to stick to note mode. We're just going to add a little frosting to what we did. Okay, let's try it. That was okay, but I'm going to uh, duplicate this again so I have a little bit of variety. Here we go. Okay, pretty happy sounding song. Trust me, not everything we're going to do is happy, but this is the it's a major key. Oftentimes, if people want to work in a minor key, they can. Um, maybe we need a little sunshine at the moment, so sunshiny vibes. We got our basic section, though, so we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now move over to section mode. So we just made section 9, right? We can preview it by holding it. So to actually make other sections, uh, what we're going to do is copy this, okay? So I've just copied this to 10, so we have duplicates of 9 and 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 13, that should be enough. So basically, we're not worrying about these sections, these were there before, but we're going to work on 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have five sections to play with. Um, in this section mode, uh, we can set the length of the step sequence, or sorry, the length of each section. So at the moment, this is representing eight bars, but you can make it up to 16 bars. Um, you could do a single bar for like maybe a turnaround, but we're gonna just keep them for eight, at eight bars right now. Um, you could also change the, the color um, by holding edit, and uh, you can change the color here. So what we're gonna do though, is we have five copies of the same 
section and we're going to subtract parts in order to um, create some variety. So let's keep number 13 as the main section. That's got everything in it. Number nine, let's just strip it back to some basic drums. So we're going to go back to sequence mode and we're going to use a section select to make sure that we're on number nine. We are. And we're going to delete these melodic tracks from that section just by holding clear and pressing the clip. So we did instrument one, sorry, we did instrument two, we'll do instrument one, and we'll do the bass, okay? So now if we jump back to section, and I play this, it should be just the drums. Easy, all right. So let's come to 10. We're gonna do the same thing. In fact, you know, let us get rid of the kit sound. So we'll save this for just the basic drums, kit, and I'm gonna clear that one. And then on section 10, we're going to clear these. So I'm just clearing bass instrument one and two. And now that should be all the drums in the congas. Cool. Then let's do number 11. We're just going to clear out instrument two and instrument one. So now the bass will come in here. And finally, let's just clear out instrument two off that one. All right. So if you weren't following that, let me just explain it to you one more time. So now we have five sections. This is just the drums. This is with the congas. That's with the bass line. That's with the marimba. That's with the little frosting on top. So, five sections, all right? Let's clear this. This was an arrangement we had before. And just show you how to lay it out, okay? So we're going to use these five sections. Um, and we hit record. We can see that this step sequencer is going to represent the arrangement from left to right. Uh, step number one is where we're going to start the song, all right? So we're going to start with the drums. Uh, and we hit the pad. So it's saying, which one do you want to put there? Okay, we'll go to the next step. We're going to do the next section, the next section, the next section, the next section. Then we could say go back to the drums or go back to the conga part, etc. So this is just playing in order, but you can repeat it if you want. Say, I want to do this section three times or whatever the case. And then you go back to the beginning. And it's just going to play through. Now the congas come in. Let me just make sure these, I'm gonna shorten these sections real quick so we can hear them. Okay, one more time, here we go. There you go, and you get the idea. So it's gonna progress through here from left to right. Now you do have the ability to use this template mode if you wanted to just have a, an automatically generated arrangement, we have different templates here that can take those sections and lay them out from left to right. And this is a way, if, if you're not very good at arrangement or you're still learning how to do it, this is just a, a way to get the Verse Lab to help you out in trying different arrangements. So once you've done that, um, the next step would be mixing down those tracks. So actually, take it one step back. I'm not going to do any vocals today. We're going to talk about this with Chris Kulau and with Zilli, uh, but you could do your vocals on here. We're going to, as I said, we're going to do that in a little bit. Just to let you know, vocals, this is a single track. We have 16 takes um, that you can record over it, and you can punch it in at any point over this arrangement that we just made. So last two steps real quick. You can go into every track. You can change the level, the panning, the delay reverb sends. You actually have a three-band EQ. And um, you do have some mastering effects. So if I was to hold shift here, we have a uh, multi-band compressor, five-band EQ, and a limiter. And the last step is mix down. So once we have it all laid out, say we've recorded some vocals, we could do full mix or just the instrumental or the vocals. And then that's going to render it as a WAV file to your SD card. Cool, cool. So um, there was a real quick demo of how to make a song. Um, minus the vocals on the verse lab. Now let's let's cut over to Cool Out because Cool Out, uh, as we said before, 
uh, is a producer, a DJ. He's also the instructor for Cloud Academy. If you don't know about Cloud Academy, Cloud Academy is our online learning platform uh, where you get real-time instruction from the man Cool Out himself. Um, cool Out knows this instrument inside and out. So we're bringing Cool Out in. Um, hey. He's made a full uh, rec uh, record on it. And what, what I love about it, too, is that Cool Out's more of a producer, but he does vocals, too. And this kind of instrument kind of empowers people that dabble in vocals to do more vocals and vice versa. Vocalists who want to be producers, you have the capacity to do it all in here. So let's bring in Cool Out. Chris, how you doing, man? What's up, man? What's up? Salute. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah, so um, I've been working on this thing with the Verse Lab as I was putting together the um, curriculum for the Cloud Academy where we kind of sit down. And um, if you just get a Verse Lab where you can go in and um, have a free online course where we just hang out for like an hour to 90 minutes and we go over all the functions where it's interactive and you get a chance to kind of um, ask questions and, and go in kind of deep functions. Verse Lab. Um, but it's a little bit different than just watching a video too because it's interactive. Um, so as I was putting the, together this curriculum, I said, man, you know, if, if I'm going to be explaining to people how they can make a, an album and make songs and projects with the Verse Lab, I should probably do one myself just to kind of run it through his paces and go through all those kind of small things that you don't think about at first that you need to go through um, to kind of finish up your project. Um, everything from like putting together the vocals, comping vocals, editing the vocals, to doing fade-ins and fade-outs, finding all the kind of little nooks and crannies and little secrets, uh, ways to kind of um, uh, put your own spin on the verse lab. So that's what I did. And, um, you know, been working on I'm just about finishing up. Um, been working on it for about a week and a half, two weeks. I got some stuff. So um, I guess we should go through and I should play something. Uh, and just an example of kind of things I've been doing. I think in general, my approach with the Verse Lab um, was to focus on kind of um, a little bit different flavors, um, mainly just kind of building stuff around sampling as far as taking, um, I'll show you real quick. Let's go to this. Okay, and go to the kit. So um, just taking like a, 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 a sample a loop and then chopping it up you know sampling percussion drums and then not and taking that a step further by utilizing the zen core engine and um, building up melodies bass lines um, and um, structure around the sample so let's play a little bit here start from let's see here um, uh... Maybe we could be more than friends off of you and the fall. So the cool thing about the verse lab, um, if you're a producer in um, and you want to no like go in, write your own songs, make it to where you can express yourself, make the type of songs you want to make, do it all over again. you can do that. Filter on the drums. Anyway, you get the, the point on that. So basically just taking a sample, um, going in and then adding um, other instrument, you know, instrumentation along with it. So, um, yeah, so like I say, if, if you're a producer, um, you know, someone that, that normally just does beats, the first lab gives you the opportunity to go in there and actually um, make the types of songs you want to make without having to necessarily search for the right type of um, artist. Just, you know, kind of jump in there yourself and experiment with vocals, experiment with um, the process of recording vocals, uh, which will give you more insight as far as working with uh, and collaborating with other artists. Um, you know, being able to go through and see what it's like to stack vocals uh, to and, you know, you have the vocal processor in there with all the different vocal effects. Um, so even if you're not the best singer, like I'm not the best singer, you know, <laughs> you can pull something off anyway. <laughs> so uh, that's another example. So um, 
I guess also some things I can show with the verse lab here. Let me load another song. Let's go with this. Let's talk about um, with the Zen core engine. Uh, it's a, a, a really has a wide range of sounds. I think there's over 3000 sounds in it. Um, and then you have the Zen core that's also on a bunch of other um, rolling products, um, different uh, other units like the groove boxes and things like that. But the verse lab actually has uh, some additional patches um, that are unique to the verse lab things that are more designed for like um, uh, modern hip hop, pop, stuff like that. You have um, everything from um, a lot of sub bass patches. They have like new categories like stack where it gives you like a kick and a sub bass that's automatically pitched um, to even on the acoustic um, sounds, um, more like vintage, low five versions of those too. So um, you have a full range of sounds. So here I did a, a song here where I was trying to go for more like a jazz vibe. I, guess I call it a pseudo jazz vibe. And I did something that's pretty cool where um, I made the verse lab solo itself. Um, and so I'll show that real quick. And I guess maybe I'll take it from. Okay, let's just see here. I'll take it from. Yeah, from right there to work. I want to have to have you sit through the whole intro. Okay. Chris, I just need to say I'm excited. I'm oh, excited. You're excited? You, sh you, sh you showed us this trick before, and you and you really found some some new uses for this. Okay, hold on. Make sure I'm showing you the right one here. Okay. Okay. No more let's block them in the zone. Definitely there. Honing the instrument spoon. Tipping the snare. Prison before let me be my enemies will care. Ignore or stay away. Empathy is rare. He was the bear that wasn't left for a moment. Focus so down the come Basically around. I found a way to make the first lab solo itself. Fresh night day yo. Hey yo. No, I'm not concerned with who you think the best are. Made a strike on bones, no feature no guest star alone in my own zone. So far in my own. I'm a king in my own throne. Or rather, I'm decided I'm a king in my own throne. Why? Because I'm grown. So, this is a combination of samples um, and then using um, more acoustic sounding patches from the Zen Core engine. So, this is the melody. I'm going to use a, um, a random play order and a different um, rhythmic scale to make the verse lab solo th that same saxophone. So every time it plays it, it's going to play a completely different solo. It's going to come in right here. in the melody and then we're going to use motion to do the fades yeah what <laughs> there's like some jazz ai going on there yeah yeah and, and like i said you know the the, the zen core, you know you have like all of the electronic sounds you have all um, the, the trap sounds, you have the sub basses, the 808 basses, you have all this stuff. Then you also have this whole other side where you have all of these, you know, acoustic sounds, you know, you can, you know, and. Oh, midi sax. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, but see, it didn't, but see, you layer it right, you know, you get the right melody. You don't. It sounds legit. Yeah, yeah it does I mean, sound, it's, it does it, sound good. It, I think it sounds good. I think it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So Chris, this is these these are 
these are advanced techniques. I mean, if people are just watching this for the first time, they're like, wait, what is he talking about? He just made the verse lab take a solo by itself. What? So just, just to, so people understand you use the, there's a, a, was it the clip behavior that you got to, to randomize? Is that what was going on there? Okay. So on the verse lab, you have, um, all your note data and the, um, sound settings are saved as a clip. And then, um, in your, the section, um, is basically um, a section is all of the clips from all of the tracks. So the um, clips are individual. So you can actually say, okay, in this particular section, I want this clip to play. And then in, in like, say for the end of the track, I said, okay, I'm going to copy that same clip, but then I'm going to change the order of which those notes are played. And you have the option to play it like forwards, which is normal, forwards, then backwards, or you can have it where it plays it randomly. Now, it's not just playing random notes. What it's actually doing is randomly playing the notes you've already programmed in. So it's actually just doing variations on that theme or that melody that, that, that I sequenced in. You know? So cool. That's yeah. really cool. I mean, this is, this is what I like about Verse Lab. It is chock full of tools um, that yeah. we can use to, to generate these kind of ideas. Um, you know, from style mode to the song templates to, uh, you know, what you're talking about, these random clip behaviors. These are all things that are really cool and help us not only come up with ideas, but help us make music more quickly, right? The fact that you were able to knock out an album in a week yeah. and a half using this is, is pretty cool. And th the thing about it is that, um, it's that the workflow strip, I just think is genius. Um, because it focus you, you know, it just makes you just just focus on getting it done, and it becomes almost like a video game. It's like you don't want to just be stuck at the first level; you want to go through and level up. And like, man, I'm just trying to get, to, I'm trying to finish yeah. this game, game and you know, I'm trying to get to that boss battle, you know, and yeah. <laughs> just get it over and done with. So uh, that's the beauty of it. But at the same time, it's, it's there's so many different tools, and it's, a, it's such a um, combination of different features that it's still deep where you know i had to give myself you know i give myself challenges like say oh um on this one i want to do something acoustic sounding i have other songs that that you know or I'm, I'm using more electronic sounds i'm using more synth synth sounds um you know i want to see if i can make it solo um there's actually you know, i'm still finding out stuff all the time um different things to flip and different things to do with the verse lab so yeah. it can get deep and yeah. in Cloud Academy, that's, that's some of the things after we go over like the basics, when we go to the advanced course, those are the, some, some of the types of things we discuss and we and I um, kind of explain and show. Yeah. Yeah. So just for folks who are watching, uh, Cloud Academy is included. If you were to purchase a Verse Lab MV1, you just need to register it and then you get an invite to, to the Cloud Academy course. There's two courses, beginners and advanced. Chris teaches both of those. Um, you know, Verse Lab is really for the the beginner producer but also the intermediate and advanced producer as you can see you can do real top level stuff just mm -hmm. to kind of get through making that song or you can d dive in deeper and do advanced stuff so pretty cool chris thanks so much for that that was really cool to see what you're doing with that and the fact that you could do so many different things with this you could make different types of music uh you can you can approach it different ways so that was really cool uh, yeah, so appreciate canvas. it man yeah man thank you Cool. So next up, we want to talk to you guys about uh, another tool that you can use with VerseLab. So um, coming soon, ZenBeats 2.1. So for those not familiar with ZenBeats, ZenBeats is our beat making app. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people out there using it. Um, but what's great about ZenBeats is that it is cross-platform. Uh, it works on Mac, PC, iOS, Android. Uh, little asterisk, the Verse Lab integration will not work with Android uh, for the first phase, but we will be introducing a patch soon that'll work with that. Uh, but Verse Lab 2. Point, uh, sorry, Zenbeats 2.1 will be coming soon, and it it allows you to have a touch-friendly interface for Verse Lab. So if you don't want to do the menu diving, we're going to show you quickly some of the advantages of using uh, Zenbeats. Uh, it makes your production and mixing even faster and easier. Um, you can further develop and refine your songs in Zen Beats. And as I said before, it works on all platforms. So let's switch over to Zen Beats. Um, hold up one second. Just bear with me here. I'm so excited to see this. 
Uh, <laughs> I really am. <laughs> all right. Sorry, guys. Here we go. There it is. Okay, Zen Beats. So as you can see, there's uh, we're plugged up to Verse Lab, and let me just picture and picture so you can see. Not me. There we go. So we're plugged into Verse Lab, and uh, we can see there's an icon here, Verse Lab Editor. So we click on that, and it populates with all the clips and the sections from uh, from the Verse Lab unit. So it knows where the clips are, and I can actually right here from the screen I can play the different sections. So this is what we were doing before. So I can play whole sections. I can also play individual clips. And then if I want, um, that whole process of copying the, the one section over multiple times, it's so much easier on Zen Beats because we can literally just swap out or we can say uh, copy and paste very easily on the screen. We can, um, you know, if there's a section that's not populated, we can drag and drop. So all that stuff is right there built in. Now, this is a beta, but like I said, it will be coming very soon. You can also notice that you have your uh, beats per minute, your key, and the name of your track uh, right up here as so, well. So, Matt. It, yes, it, sir. So this is just that that audio information is not actually in Zen Beats. It's Zen Beats controlling the Verse Lab. Correct. Yes, so this, exactly, this is a project editor. So this is not running uh, a Zen Beat session per se. This is a dedicated GUI and editor that works with Verse Lab cool. when you're in Zen Beats. The first iteration of this, uh, it, it doesn't sync with Zen Beats, but what you can do is you can record all your tracks individually into Zen Beats um, and then further refine it using you know, other Zen Beats sounds. But you know, if you want to add extra tracks, you can do that. Now, one really important thing to let you guys know, uh, this, this Zen Beats integration will be a rolling, evolving uh, integration, meaning that we're going to be implementing new patches uh, fairly regularly um, so that we're, we'll be introducing new features. For instance, Android support will be one of the first things that we add. Um, let me dive a little deeper into this, though. So some other benefits. So you have a mixing screen, okay? So you have this pop-out GUI here. Um, and, you know, when you're mixing on VerseLab, um, you can do it all on here. You press one track, and you go to your mixer, and you can access your EQ, et cetera, et cetera. But in the case of uh, Zen Beats, you can actually access all your tracks at once. So it makes it a lot easier to change your levels, your painting, your delay and reverb sense, et cetera, et cetera, all from one screen. That's quite a bit of a time saver. Additionally, you have these uh, effects here and your mastering effects. So they have dedicated GUIs. Um, these these parameters that we're looking at are spread over a couple menu pages. So it's really a benefit to be able to access all of these parameters on wow. a single GUI in Zen Beats, right? So, you know, your multi effects is all right here. Now, multi effects is something that we're not going to have bandwidth to talk about today, but there's over like 90 different multi effects that all live in here. There's tons of them. Uh, you can access all of them and, and uh, edit them right here in Zen Beats. You also have access to your multiband compression, your five band EQ, your limiter, all with dedicated GUIs. So that's a real time saver. And then finally, um, you can also do tone editing. So if I cl double click on one of these clips, I then get a dedicated tone editor uh, with both tone and F MFX and your mix parameters all in a GUI. So I can see I have my tuning here. I have my envelope controls, uh, some vibrato controls. Uh, importantly, your filter controls here as well, uh, and some key modes. So all this is built into this VerseLab project editor that lives in Zen Beats 2.1. So pre pretty exciting. And you know, as we say, that this is um, not a replacement for this. It's, it's a way of enhancing the workflow. VerseLab by itself works great as a standalone unit. Um, but you know, sometimes with, with the screen and menu diving, the, adding Zen Beats is really going to speed up your uh, some of that production process, particularly with the mixing and the sound editing. So, and uh, w what formats is Zen Beats on? Zen Beats works on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android, and it's uh, the Android support will be forthcoming. So that's that's one we'll introduce a little bit later. Okay. And okay. this this update is coming uh, very soon. So so keep your ear to the ground. Uh, Zen Beats 2.1 is launching.
very soon. So there you have it. A uh, quick run through Zen Beats. Now, I want to take the time to introduce uh, our special guest coming in from L.A., uh, Zilly, uh, who is one half of one half of Black Alack, uh, a uh, rap duo from Austin originally, but uh, now based in uh, Los Angeles. If you guys haven't checked out the launch video that we did, Zilly is the star of that video. Um, he's a really great demonstrator and shows how, how the vocal recording works and how the whole uh, beat creation works on uh, MV1. So, um, Zilly, are you there? Yo, what's up, man? Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks um, for having me, man. Yeah, so, you know, we, we've been working with some artists on this unit, but I think of all the people that I've spoken to, you are the one that really keyed into this. And I think you, you kind of understood the concept straight out the gate. You were making tracks on it very quickly. Um, and, you know, you did such a great job with the, the launch video showing it. Um, I want to just maybe start with asking you a little bit about, you know, your background. Uh, and then we can kind of lead into Verse Lab. But tell us a little bit about your musical background, how you started yeah, so I'm originally from Austin, Texas. Uh, shout out to all my people in Texas right now going through the mm. crazy weather. Uh, be, be safe, please. Um, I'm from Austin, Texas originally. I started getting into music from really poetry at first. That kind of turned into a lot of freestyle, a lot of rap battles that I would go to across the country. And then that became a full-time artist um, mentality where I was trying to you know, create songs, put out mixtapes, and, uh, and work with like fellow musicians in Austin. So that started moving along for me. And uh, being, from, being from Texas, you don't have the same resources in terms of like hip hop producers that you do in, in LA or New York or even Atlanta. Um, so a lot of my sound was generated from real instrumentation, guitar players or sampling stuff like Pink Floyd and you know stuff that I was used to hearing as I was growing up. Um, and that ended up getting me into some really interesting spaces, touring with uh, bands like AWOL Nation, Imagine Dragons from California, um, but also, you know, doing big shows with, you know, opening up for like Drake and doing stuff with heavy hip hop heads like KRS-One, Talib Kweli. Um, so I've really been kind of around the full spectrum of music. And the most recent thing I'm, I'm doing is a project called Black Alack, which is myself and another rapper from Austin, Texas, Name franchise and we teamed up with our our good homie gary clark jr who's an amazing uh, guitar player producer grammy award-winning um dope individual and uh he's helping us create that project right now and that's kind of where we're at man and you know just working on music and trying to find new ways to empower myself more to be also an individual producer so very cool yeah, we were talking before, you know, with Cool Out being primarily a producer, you being primarily a vocalist, but being able to kind of switch roles with a verse lab, you know, you, you when we first started talking, you said, you know, I can produce, but that's not really my strong suit. But man, you jumped into it and you you clued into it real quick. And, and same with Chris, like Chris is dope on the mic, but he's more of a producer. But this kind of empowered him to to put that hat on as well, yeah. which is pretty cool. So I'm curious to know. Um, you know, when, when you approach songwriting, um, how has the Verse Lab helped that process for you? Like, what were some revelations for you and some things that helped your songwriting with Verse Lab? I think one of the biggest things was the song arrangement portion of it. So when you start understanding the, the velocity and the momentum of the music in terms of verse here, let me have a bridge and maybe create some, some drama in the music um, before I go back into the hook knowing the momentum of the music and understanding it more by arranging it in the verse lab kind of gives you a different hat or a different perspective as a lyricist or as a writer um, to understand how to support that or vice versa, have the music support what you're doing in terms of energy or emotion on that, you know, in that particular portion. So for me, it just helped me get a, a more visual and more hands-on approach and picture to how am I going to tell this story from A to B when I'm writing music? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, my background is mostly, um, I've been producing since the 90s, mostly do house music, but I've done other more traditional songs. And, you know, the 
the f- process of arranging songs has always been the hardest thing for me, especially in a DAW when you have to like do global cuts of a section and paste it and, oh, I didn't get the automation or this didn't cut copy over. It could be a real pain uh, and a real kind of labor. And like that didn't work out. I have to undo that. With the verse lab, I totally get what you're saying. Like having this visual tactile approach to song arrangement is really quite liberating because it's super easy to lay it out. And if you don't like it, it's super easy to change it, you know, either using the templates or just quickly, you know, rearranging the right. parts. Um, so I think people will find that pretty liberating. One one tip, too, for anybody that's not really in, you know, who maybe let me use my wife as an example. She's very musical. She loves to sing, um, but she doesn't. She, she can't like identify oh, that's the chorus that's the bridge that's the verse so one great way to learn those things is to like even do cover versions or transcribe those things to get more familiar with what those sections are and that's something that i did is there any other tips that you could give people when it comes to to songwriting just generally um that have helped you develop your craft yeah i i think in general when writing music and writing you know lyrics to it um, it's just about inspiration. I try not to stick too hard on maybe one single idea. I kind of allow space for the music to also create some inspiration and, and create a different type of energy in me to write or to ch- You know, I don't hold myself to one particular idea in the production. If I start with, you know, section A, by the time it gets to the end of the alphabet, this, this music might be totally different. But I think that's what's dope by being more hands-on with something like Verse Lab. You kind of fall into these new categories um, and new uh, new inspirations with the sound itself that push you in different directions. And so for me, the main thing is lean into that. Don't restrict yourself or put yourself in a box when you're writing your music. Um, that's always been a big help for me. And also when you hit a wall, just back up. Stop writing. Yeah. Put the pin down. Take a walk. You know. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah that, that's great advice. Um, you know, another um, subject that's been coming up, especially in this kind of age of lockdown and pandemic uh, that we're living through um, is collaboration, you know, human connection. How do we continue to collaborate remotely? Um, and, you know, Verse Lab is an instrument that lets you do that to a certain degree. Um, before we get into this, you actually made a song that we'll talk about in a sec, but um, yeah. do you also have, you know, tips for, you know, you're saying when you kind of run out of ideas, that's where collaboration could come in. Like you could start bouncing off ideas off of other people and that, that just is a snowball effect. So, you know, when it comes to working with your, with your partner franchise, like do you have any tips for people when they want to collaborate working with new people approaches to doing that? Yeah, I mean, I think what's always a good angle is trying to collaborate with people that offer something you don't because it, A, will impact the song by adding a different flavor to what you already create, but also you can start learning things from their style or from their delivery or their process that you can take the things you love the most and start applying them to your particular style or what you're creating. So uh, again, I I think the same rule that I talked about when producing music applies to collaboration. Don't limit yourself. I've worked with all kinds of artists from all different genres and we've created some really, you know, cool music out of um, just being open to like letting music be its own free, you know, free thing. Yeah, that's dope. I really like that. So I appreciate, so you made a song for us that we're going to check out and this is, this would be good to kind of see your process for, um, especially how you use the vocals. So we didn't deep dive too deep into it, but that's one of the most unique things about first lab is the fact that you can record a, record all your vocals and uh so your your project just loaded up and my mic just jumped because yeah. i think you had some effects on there but I keep it hot man i keep it hot. yeah I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm rocking hot here it's good yes. uh, but you can record all your vocals on here you have vocal processing so let's have a look at your track actually let's start just by listening to it um so let's hear hit play here hopefully this is the right one atx to everywhere oh You know how it tastes. Max. I don't wear design at all. Uh, nah. You cannot define the flow. Uh, Why? Laying back, reclining, bro. Uh, that ain't me. I grind and grow. Uh, my hustle is beyond. 
It's driving this up like it's Elon skirt, skirt, skirt. Spin it up, that's black on black But the Cactus Jacks is neon huh? I'm walking, I'm on sweat No kid cutty, but it's big money And my chick funny, and the hips money It's a hit dummy, we just lit money uh. We ain't shopping Nice, nice. And I got to say, I did that in about 45 minutes on the burst lab. So it's a quick process, man, which I love. You can blast through it. So let's look at it. So if we cut over to the vocal track, you've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven takes. Um, if I hold it, I could preview it. So it kind of depends on where you start recording if we Cutting hear the it. Breaks. But you can hear it straight away. Place. Cutting the brakes. So you you've approached this like a lot of a lot of songwriters, but you know sometimes people don't hear or they don't recognize this. You're using this like you're co you're collaging pieces together, right? You're using sections, certain takes with different effects. You obviously in the chorus you had something that's very heavy auto auto tune, right? Um, t talk us through how you approach this song and how you, how you did your vocal takes. So I think the first thing I always do with the song is go straight to the hook. And I was like, man, I know Matt loves auto tune. So let me <laughs> So let me get this Travis Scott hook on here. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. uh and you know, that's just a that's a, a very contemporary texture, you know what I mean? Like that vibe is hot, especially out of Texas. So um, you know, the first thing I did was lay the hook and having that auto tune on it does create a whole different vibe and energy. And then when I started laying the verses, I wanted that to be more clean more deliberate and i even styled it with more of a like east coast rap pacing on it you know just to give some some throwback um but uh, you know for me i start with the hook then i go into the verse and i try to keep it simple because i don't want to clutter the mix too much with vocals because the music also clearly speaks to the listener um but you know i lay a backtrack just to emphasize then i lay the ad libs that's the uh yeah that's the that's when you're hyping Damn. yourself up yeah by the way, if you ever walked in on a rapper doing ad libs and they have the headphones on, it's the most hilarious ever. Because all you hear is, oh, yeah, uh, uh. It's great. <laughs> what, are, what are they doing? What yeah. are they doing in there? Turn yeah. my headphones up. Yeah. Turn my headphones up. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I try to take that approach to it and maybe add a little intro, a little outro. And, uh, and then, yeah, just apply different textures to each layer so that it has a different feel to it. Very cool. So just to let people know, this vocal processor has a bunch of different effects. Uh, and the easiest way to get into it is just by holding shift and pressing the on button. And then you can get to all these different vocal patches, auto pitch, double track, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of different stuff that you can access in there. Um, so that's beyond that, you can deep dive and you can go into menus and whatnot. Um, but that is all there in the vocal processor. You can record it directly to the take or you can do a dry take and add it later. Uh, there's a lot of different approaches to it. And all those things are covered in cool outs. Um, cloud academy class so make sure to check that out um so in the spirit of collaboration you sent this over to me uh me being a detroit guy originally loving dance floor stuff i um detroit. did a little remix of it detroit the De saint, is it saint andrew's music hall there oh you know oh yeah you know? I, played, I played there a few times man legend legendary spot. saint andrews oh, yeah. is legendary papa Yo. smurf papa smurf's out there i don't know if you know that cat <laughs> I, I, i'm probably too old it's been, a, it's been a while. He doesn't but, rap. He doesn't rap. <laughs> okay, okay. But St. Andrews is definitely the, the stomping grounds for a lot of great stuff over the years. Um, so I took basically what I did was I took your vocals, I took the music out, and I just I kept the arrangement the same. But to double time it, so your track was in 70, I went, let me do double time. I'm going to do 140. Um, and what I did was basically just change the clip scale from 16 to 32, 1 16th to 1 32. So for, for anybody that doesn't know what that means, basically it just means you're able to make your clips double time. So if I go to my section, I can quickly preview those for you guys. So very different vibe. I'm going to the club, Matt. You get the idea. So to play the song with the vocals, I just arranged some of those sections, uh, kept your vocals in there, and then we hit from the beginning. So we'll just check out a little bit of it. ATX to everywhere. Oh. 
Yeah. So a little, Yo, little real time collab. What's our band name, Matt? Oh man, we got to work on that one. Yeah, I, oh man, you put me on the spot. You tell me. I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll think about it. Dirty Just Detroit. Post it, po post it up in the chat. There we go. And we got some ideas for our new our new crew. Post it up in the chat. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, they have. It, it is really, it, you know, if p two people have this, it's super easy to collab. You have the same project format. You can bounce vocals back and forth. Even if, even if you don't, you know, you could send me those vocals and I can import them into DAW. You can record everything on there, uh, and you know, or vice versa. You can send me your vocals and I can put it into Verse Lab. So this is a really great kind of standard format for people to collab with. Versus, you know, sometimes with DAWs, you got different. Uh, different plugins, different platforms, et cetera, that makes it a little bit more difficult. So, um, yeah, dope, dope. So, hey, let's do more, Zilly. Yeah, man, I'm down. We got to bring Cool Out on some of this. Yeah, I'm, cool I'm Out, ready. too. Yeah, crew. This is the crew. <laughs> this is Talk the Talk about different, different vibes coming together. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Cool. Hey, uh, fellas, thank you so much for getting down today and being part of this live stream. Uh, we have a few minutes left, and I know that um, our man Dustin is is monitoring the chat. Um, if there's any questions people have, now's a good time to throw them out there. We got a couple uh, before we started uh, that we're going to throw out, and I think I might pass these to cool out. So there was a couple questions about um, time stretching, uh, a really random question beatbox samples question mark so <laughs> yeah so i guess for folks who want to know you know just a little bit about like you know could they sample themselves beatboxing couldn't they time stretch uh any elements in this chris could you break that down for us just a little bit yeah well one of the cool things about the sampling functions in the verse lab is that um well audio functions in general is that it's um pretty open where um you can uh resample from any of the tracks even from the master output and then you can also record that into um, the vocal takes and vice versa. So you can move um, audio back and forth. So um, the vocal take is a um, linear audio track that just plays alongside the song in the song mode. But then um, within the sequence, um, the regular sequence mode, you have um, a looper track type, which has um, time stretch uh, where you could go in and change the tempo, but the pitch will remain the same. So what you could do is you could bounce any of the tracks into a looper track or uh, record into the looper track and it would play along um, with the sequence and then if you wanted to you could bounce that into uh, a mm. pad on the drum kit into a vocal take so you can go back and forth um, as far as time stretching audio that way um, that really kind of opens up a lot of the flexibility going that back sounds and forth. that that sounds like an advanced class topic just just saying yeah, but it's, it's, in practice, it's, it's a lot easier. It, it takes about the same amount of time as it took for me to explain it. Right, honestly. right on, right on. <laughs> so just for, for folks right. who don't know, instrument one and two, those could be swapped out uh, for looper tracks. So before we said, you know, even though these tracks are labeled kick, snare, hi-hat, kit, mm -hmm. bass, instrument one and two, you could customize those. In the case of instrument one and two, those could be swapped out for looper tracks, just like Chris was talking about. So you can bring in loops. You can time stretch those loops. A, a word of advice, when it does come to the vocal workflow, it's probably best to commit to your tempo, then record the vocals. It's going to be difficult um, to 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 redo the vocals with that method that Chris was saying. So it's best to kind of lock in your tempo, then record your vocals. Um, yeah. But with the, with the looper tracks, you do have the ability to time stretch. Yep. Um, yeah. Not sure if there's any other questions that came Is in. Any other questions? Br 
Regarding beatboxing, though, we didn't mention you do have a built-in mic here. So if you're not uh, you're not equipped with a mic, you can definitely uh, beatbox right into there. I tried it today and it worked great. I was able to flex my my 1993 beatbox skills. Got real nasty <laughs> in that little that little mic. Um, can you? Okay, here's a question from Richard. Uh, he said. Um, can you record instruments or analog synths onto the vocal track? Great question, and the answer is absolutely yes. This, again, it's labeled vocal, but you can record any audio source into this. So you could do this multi-track kind of approach. Um, we didn't really show it, but, you know, say I was to record a sax part in here, um, I, could, I could easily, you know, create harmonies, record over top, and then I can, I can also... Um, take the vocal take and I can hold it and I can paste it anywhere in the track just by holding the take and then the step sequencer. So that could be any audio source, analog synth, instruments, mm -hmm. vocals. Yeah. I, I was going to mention there's times on sessions where I'll sample something um, from, you know, my DAW through my interface and just input it right into the verse lab and record whatever that, you know, sound or sample or sometimes I'm taking vocals from YouTube or whatever. Um, right into the verse lab. So it's not just vocals. You can, I mean, any audio signal you can capture. And yeah. I'll add on to that with a little trick here. I don't know, know if you guys know about this. Um, but if you're using a verse lab, say um, you have um, a bunch of external gear that you're actually sequencing through the verse lab where you can assign um, a MIDI channel and instead of using the Zencore engine, like maybe you have some, you know, esoteric analog synth that you have your favorite bass patch on it or something like that but you're sequencing through the verse lab, you can actually, um, the audio inputs stay on during mix down. Mm. So you don't have to actually, if you have some external instruments, um, you don't, whether you have them sequenced through the verse lab or you have their sequences going and maybe the, the, the um, clocks are synced, you don't have to commit that to an audio track. You can actually on mix down, record the, um, the uh, analog inputs at the same time into your your mix down and it'll go through it uh, um, it bypasses the mixer but it goes through the mastering section too so you can actually keep all your external stuff going virtual until really you hit cool. mix down that's dope that, that's great for folks yeah. with yeah external gear uh in the studio this is really really great tip right there uh we had another qu question quick question for cool out and zilly do you prefer writing lots of quickly I guess lots of songs quickly or taking time over a few beats. Sounds like this machine is good for capturing spontaneity. Either you guys want to field that one? Um, I can take it first. I'm sure we both have different yeah. uh, <laughs> attacks on it. Uh, for me, I like to create uh, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So I like, I like to get the idea out and put it down, maybe not commit to the lyrics or even the arrangement just yet, but just an idea for it. And I'll, I'll make you know as many of these ideas as I can. And then I just let them go to war, Smash Brothers style. I'm like, all right, which one's doper? And then I kind of get the dopest ones, the ones that I'm really feeling the most. And those will be the ones that I then go back and focus on and take more time on maybe the arrangement or def definitely the lyrics and the hooks, et cetera. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's I, how I approach it. Yeah. I think that's the only way you come up with a good idea is to have, you know, like, you know, a million bad ones until you find mm -hmm. a good one. So yeah. You have, you have mm -hmm. to work through the, those, those not so good ideas. I shouldn't say bad. Um, but as far as anything could be the thing that kind of hooks it and, and gives that inspiration, you know, like I was doing a song the other day where, you know, it was just re reminding me, speaking of, of, of you being in L.A., Zilly, of reminding me like the time I was in L.A. in a rental car driving up to PCH. Yeah. You know, and it's like, ah, oh, man, this is what this track sounds like. I find, you know, just I could picture that the emotion oh. and feeling that I felt. You know, in that little bitty, you know, yeah. small compact rental car, you know, just driving up the coast, you know, with, with, and, and like listening to KCRW. Oh yeah, you know? right. and I was like, ah, th this is what. Say, this did you are you sample in traffic, just horns and traffic on the PCA? <laughs> no, actually, well, it was it was in I think it was like maybe towards the afternoons. So it wasn't much traffic. Okay, you're good. You're good. You know? yeah. yeah. So, but that that feeling, you know, that of of you know, just when the sun's starting to go down, and or, or you know, and it's yep. just like the the breeze is going. I was like, man, this is what it feels like, and so that's the hook and that's what i wrote from the 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 kind of place that i wrote from so chris, chris that is the exact opposite of what i'm seeing outside the window right now in <laughs> i know what are you I talking know. about these breezy pch <laughs> drives and it's like it's a beautiful foot of out snow here. outside yeah that's exactly wow. the opposite of what i'm seeing so con yeah con conjuring some other time and place but um, that's what you need that's the power of music you yes. know to take you to another place 
Yes, sir. 100%. Yep. You're right. Yo, fellas, thank you so much for uh, to Gabe, our producer, saying it's T-shirt and shorts weather in L.A. Thanks, bro. Appreciate <laughs> Thanks. that, Gabe. Thanks. Appreciate that. I can see, like, Zilly's in his sleeveless here, and I'm, I'm all bundled up in my <laughs> You can see what I'm wearing. I mean, I still got my hat on because I'm, I'm cold. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. Um, I'm good. Fellas, thank you so much for getting down with us today. It was great chopping it up and, and going in on the Verse Lab with you guys, all with our kind of own little approaches to it. Uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun doing this with you today. Thank you so much. Um, thanks to everybody who tuned in today. Um, make sure to reach out to your local dealer if you want to get some more information about uh, Verse Lab. It is available for purchase right now. If you do grab it, make sure to register it at Roland.com, and you will get an invite to our Cloud Academy courses, which, again, are taught by our man DJ Coolout, um, beginner and advanced classes, so you can really take the whole journey with Chris. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's it, and we are out, and uh, get creating. Have fun making some songs. We'll hopefully see you for another live stream soon. <laughs> Thank you.